Alexa, who's Steve McKeegan? Sorry, I don't know that one. So, Shuffy, tell me what you got here. Well, got the new V9 pad. It's gonna try out. I really feel good, so. Well, show me the glove. Let's see what the trapper looks like. Oh. We open it up here. Got the wrist strap, and then this. You can obviously make it tighter or looser. And then I'm pretty sure I don't. I I'm used to a 590 brake. Well, I think this is 600 or 580, I think, so. But pretty good seal. guys are all enjoying getting back on the ice. Hope you enjoyed some of the clips we showed you today of some of the goalies we've been training over the last month. There's been a Q&A I've offered up and here are some of the questions and answers that I have for them. And I think some of you guys are a little off. t -Bass asks, what do you think of garden gnomes? Well, they scare me more than clowns, so there's that. Sweet Pea wants to know, if you won $10 million in a lottery, what would you do? Well, I'd buy a semi-pro team sign Trav, and then cut him, and then you get a ton of content for all of his struggle videos. Uncell6 asks, what's the most attractive cartoon character? 
Barney Rubble, maybe Paul Maurice. John 7 says, what celebrity does Trafford Oilers most look like? And I'd say PGA golfer John Rahm after a night of partying. Slim Spidey asks, will you ever do a beer league clinic again? Love Spidey. Well, I've done tons of adult clinics. I plan on doing a ton more private work with adults because I really enjoy it. And also up in Toronto and around London, we're going to do a ton of adult goalie clinics. And I'll travel anywhere in the United States once we're allowed to do clinics for adults free of charge. CO Dunn asks, do you have a suggested diet for goalies? Although I have a nutritional background and a physical fitness kinesiology background, I always defer to experts. So I suggest you reach out to NutriPro Canada, any nutrition certified expert. A nutritionist can get you the proper diet, proper intake of all the different components that you need to be a successful goaltender. Don't just reach out to people online, go to the experts, pay the money, and get on a proper goalie specific nutritional program. I'll put some links in the bio to one of the girls that I deal with in London who's outstanding. A. Scholstrom 31, coming to Sweden anytime soon? No. Trav for Oilers asks, what was it like having to air out my gear for me? Trav, you have a smelly bag. Ryder Grega asks, how does an undersized goalie prove themselves? Well, a big goalie has to prove they can't play and a small goalie has to prove they can play. So you must be subjectively and objectively more dominant than all your competition. At the end of the day, they'll always take the best goalie if you're small, if you're clearly dominant. If you're just as good as, they'll always default to the big guy. Owen.Clark5 asks, taking goalie coaching from side hustle to full-blown business, top three concerns. Number one, you need to have a decent hockey background. You need to intern with people that are experts in the field. And you have to just slog away and hustle and not expect immediate money right off the bat. I get kind of nervous when I hear people call goalie coaching a side hustle. And there are a lot of people out there that just realize there's a very lucrative business here. And they throw up a shingle. They've been at a hockey school when they were a kid or they maybe played junior a little bit. And now they're going to open up their hockey school. So to make a true side hustle become a full-time gig, I think what you need to do and the number one concern is intern with experts. Find a million different goalie coaches and just don't marry yourself to one. Compile everything together to become the best goalie coach you can. Eduardo Pepe, what's the biggest difference between teaching a female goalie and a male goalie? Generally speaking, female goalies are much more compliant. They listen better. They implement things. Most male goalies are good too, but, but overall female goalies are a pleasure to coach because they're always wanting to get better and don't give you any attitude. Well, I got about eight questions from John Blouch, so here we go. What do you do in your free time? I watch Trafford Oilers videos on an endless loop on my TV because I have no life. John Blouch again asks, if you could use one piece of modern day gear when you were playing, what would it be? I think it would be the new jocks. John Bloach asks again, favorite thing about working with Trav when our last lesson is over? John Bloach again, what's your favorite kind of muffin? I would say um, blueberry bran. John Bloach, what's your favorite part about coaching? shooting cheesy YouTube videos and acting like I'm 20, even though I'm an old goat at 53. Crazy Goalie Dad asks, what advice you can give to a 12 year old girl trying out for boys, U15, AA in the fall? Well, first of all, the puck doesn't know whether you're a boy or girl, so don't even worry about the sex issue, male or female, just stop the puck. Be the first kid on the ice, last kid off the ice, and make sure whoever the incumbent goalie is, if you can figure that out, that she outskates that boy every single time and she's the hardest worker at all the tryouts. Tony Goalie 47, do you think not having Mitch Korn has affected Holtby's game any? That's hard to say. The one thing I can say is almost every goalie that Mitch Korn works with gets the best out of them. So when Mitch coaches you, you get a Vesna. Simple as that. So Mitch isn't coaching him now, likely not going to get another Vesna. Apollo Suku Omi asks, DM me. No. Boyle Sean 11, what was it like in the NHL? Hard to say because my career was so pitiful, but it was sweet. Mateo Vieira 37, what can you do when you're getting negative on yourself? 
uh, when he's having bad games. Mateo, there's no negativity and there's no positivity in the present. So if you had a bad game and you're still thinking about it, you need to learn to get yourself into the moment by asking yourself questions about what's going on right now. So there's nothing negative or positive in the present, it's just the present, so stay in the moment. Ben Greenlee asks, off-season training approach, more gym time, less ice time, or vice versa? I think you have to have a blended answer there. It will depend on your age and your development level, but at the end of the day, you don't want to be on the ice a ton in the summer. I think maybe once a week is top just to stay wet, but really get into the gym and make the gym the heavier proponent of your off-ice training, your off-season training, and only go out on the ice maybe once a week. Once you get closer to the season, you can ramp it up, but I wouldn't be out there a ton in the summer times. Jardik too responded, how often should a young goalie be on the ice in the off season? Super young kid, maybe take a month off, six weeks off, maybe once a week, but less is more. Like a young Tiger Woods at the driving range, his dad wouldn't let him stay for two hours. He made him leave when he wanted to stay. So hold back summertime stuff from their kid. Let them do a little bit, but not as much as they want. Create that hunger, create that passion, make them miss it. So they want to go back into the fall hungry. Well, that's it for the Q&A. Please send any of the stupidest questions you have, serious questions, whatever, and I'll take them all on and I'll answer them and put them in an upcoming video. So enjoy your week. Back on the ice 20 hours again this week, coaching every goalie that comes to London, Ontario for working with the GOAT.